Good morning. This is Evangelist Robert L. McKim, Sr. I am very, very um, hurt, for one thing. Um, my, my father, he's almost 80 years old. But he's always been kind of selfish and self-centered. Um, he w never, he, because he, he, he never graduated, or, or finished, I should say, junior high. He never went to high school and, and graduated high school. He worked for a family-owned business. He worked, uh, he was a, uh, worked for a moving company. Uh, family owned, owned business uh, called uh, AJ McCam Transfer and Storage. It was an Allied Van Lines co moving company uh, franchise. My uh, dad's uh, father started the business, and when my dad's uh, father died in 1964, it was supposed to have been divided between all the kids but the oldest brother basically took over long story short a while back when I was having this issue with my vehicle I borrowed some money from an online place so we can get some groceries and I also borrowed a hundred dollars from my dad well, my dad supposedly had bought a small double wide mobile home in Florida for four thousand dollars money that he was saving up, I guess money that he keeps saying that the job and family services wants because my you know they gave my mother help uh because she had open heart surgery twice she was very anemic and then later died of aplastic anemia she was also having some COPD problems job and family services welfare wanted her to pay them $499 spend down before they would even attempt to help her but then they get her on this waiver program. See, the problem is people don't understand. When you're on welfare, Medicaid, Medicare, they want their money back after you die. You know, you work for it. You work for it. You spend tax dollars off of your paycheck. Every two week, every week, or every two weeks, that goes to the government, goes to Medi Medicaid and Medicare. But then after you die, if you use that money after you die, they want their money back. It's like you're giving it twice to them, not while you're work, you know, not just while you're working, but so also after you're dead and gone. They, they want that money back, and they'll get it at any means, even if they got it to harass and terrorize the family members to get it back. They make you sell the property, get rid of the property, and then give them that money. It's a Ponzi scheme. The government really does not have the money to help anybody. That's the church's place, really, to be helping people. But the church isn't getting the money like it used to, either. I've asked uh, my, my church, uh, last month they gave, uh, no, the month before, they gave us a $40 gift card. From Thorns, of all places, one of the highest grocery stores, high-priced grocery stores in, in, in Carrollton. Long story short, because the power is going out here on my computer, here's a, a good illustration 
for uh, Proverbs 3.27. It's a rescue dog going to the rescue. And here's the Bible. Uh, what uh, Proverbs uh, 3.27 says. Do not withhold good from those to yeah from those to whom it is due when it is in your power of your hand to do so do not say to your neighbor go and come back and tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you there's another verse in the Bible in the back of the Bible in the, where it says that uh, if someone comes to you needing help do not you know tell them to go in peace or as a true believer a true Christian you're not supposed to say to somebody when you have the money on you or 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 if you have the way of getting the money and helping that person out right now when it's in your power to do so you're not supposed to tell them go in peace Come back later. You're supposed to do it now. Now is the time. Now we are supposed to be loving one another. Now we are supposed to be helping one another. Not later. I've had people tell me I went to. Uh, tell me. Um, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. You know what good is that? It Prayer helps, but prayer does not help for the problem right now. I'm experiencing some financial difficulty right now. Not later, right now. And some people will say, well... You need to be a better steward. You need to be a better steward. You need to be a better steward. Well, my battery's going to die off here. So, long story short, I only have $35.36 left in my checking account. And I still have... My electric bill of $85 that's going to come out. Prepaid legal. Life lock. And I also need some money for my to put on my credit card. Of $20. So. I need help. I have a computer. Laptop computer. I'm trying to sell. But it's got some issues. Maybe someone out there might be able to. You know work on it. Get it going. Working right. Renee wants to sell her uh, computer over here. Monitor keyboard that we picked up for a hundred and sixty dollars. Uh, we're asking two hundred or best offer. Long story short, I need help. I need at least a hundred dollars to be able to pay my bills this month and maybe I might have some left over to get a little bit more groceries I need but if I didn't have to give my dad that hundred dollars I owed him so he can go to Florida then I wouldn't be hurting so bad this month but that's my dad for you he cares more about himself and he cares about his own 